Okay, it's been a while. I got a new toy. It shoots 762 by 39 It is an AK variant. This is an AKM-63, or uh, it's actually sold as an SA-2000, or an AMD-63. Um, so I got this from Clearview Investments. Um, a lot of people, they disdain this gun because they say, well, you should have bought a Wasser. Well, for one, I can not find any Wassers at this price. I got this for $5.29. Another thing is, you know, that people disdain is the fact that uh, uh, it has uh, U.S. parts. Um, that's a requirement uh, for compliance. So <clears throat> the parts that are U.S. are the stock. What is it? It's a Phoenix Technology stock. It is hollow. Uh, this does bend down. You can store stuff in it. Um, the barrel is U.S. sourced. Um, let me see. It came. It came with four Tapco mags. It has a Tapco trigger. Um, so all of those are compliance parts. Um, if you replace them, it more than likely has to be U.S. parts in order for you to stay compliant with it. So you can't swap the trigger back. Uh, the you know the the OEM trigger back. So this is an uh, Hungarian sourced uh, parts kit gun. All the internal parts are forged, so you're not going to see this uh, this particular weapon beating itself up internally. Um, let's see what else. <clears throat> this is due to compliance as well um, if you pull this off and put a regular uh, what do you call it a slant break um, you're out of compliance uh, in fact when you do that you make it a, a short barrel rifle and you probably have to register that as an NFA item um, but you see people on the internet, internet and the interwebs posting that they put a slant nose break on this particular gun um, so don't do that. I have not fired it yet. Uh, the differences between this gun and a regular AK is the gas tube and the fact that uh, it had a foregrip. I removed a foregrip. Uh, this thing is actually unique. Um, it, it's, it's actually cool looking, but um, it does nothing to keep the heat off your hand. And I'm not one for foregrips as well. Um, so I removed it. If I want a foregrip, <clears throat> this mag pull will take a foregrip as well. Um, so this required some fitting, um, but I bought the uh, the AKM variant of the uh, the lower handguard. Um, it came with an upper uh, gas tube uh, cover, but it won't fit because this is a non-standard gas tube. So that's another, uh, <clears throat> I guess, issue that some people have with that. The gun isn't quite a standard AKM, but it isn't something that's butchered. Um, right? Like again, this is actually a parts kit gun. Uh, this is a this is a, a Hungarian gun. The gun that come that that I received it, um, I guess, in the configuration that I received it, is how they build them in Hungary. So with this and that that's how they make them so some people call them non-standard but for hungry this is standard enough um, so I have not taken this to the range yet I have no idea what I'm waiting on um, there's no reason for me not to because I have 500 rounds of Red Army Standard 762 by 39 lead core non corrosive steel case cartridges. Um, I have 500 of those, and I bought this when I bought the gun, thinking that uh, I was going to shoot it 
uh, a day or two before. Um, so the difference between this and this, this is still core, I mean this is still cased. Um, none of these are still core. Uh, this is brass case. Now I wish I could find more of this. I bought this locally. Um, they didn't have all that much. And plus it wasn't really cheap. I bought 500 of these for 99 bucks through uh, Lax Ammo. Um, as well, I picked this up at Cabela's. And yeah, don't let me start on Cabela's. Um, this isn't really what I wanted. I did. I bought this thinking it, that it was regular FMJ. It is not. It is South Point Round Nose. Um, these sometimes do not fire particularly well from AKs because the AKs are designed to feed pointed ammo. So this is what this looks like. This is more of like a hunting round. Not sure if that'll focus. Huh, it actually did for a second, then it stopped. Is it going to focus? But yeah, we'll fire it anyways because I did see a video of someone talking about this and they fired a whole box on film without any jamming or whatsoever. So this might work. Um, so my plans are to eventually replace this. I'm waiting for Kyber Customs. They, they occasionally make... Uh, modified gas tubes uh, what I want is a gas tube that actually has the fittings so I can actually have a cover so the cover that came with the Magpul lower handguard um, it won't fit on this because this is a non-standard gas tube it, not only is this gas tube short it's it's shorter than like a regular AK and even a, an AKM um, but it doesn't have the mountings for a cover. Uh, so Kyber Customs takes regular standard AK-47 uh, gas tubes and they cut them down and the tube actually has the mounting equipment for the cover. Um, so I'm waiting for those to go on sale again. I actually emailed those guys and asked them if they, yes, there's nothing in here. Um, I emailed them to ask them if they were still making them because I, I read on the forums that they they do tend to make them uh, but they sell out quickly and since I bought this I've been looking and they haven't sold any so I, I sent an email asking them if they if they're planning on uh, selling another batch excuse me and they said yeah they're they're in the process of building a batch now which means that Every day I'm logging, in, logging. Uh, I guess going to their page, going to that cell. Uh, what do you call it? That uh, that cell entry, and actually checking to see if they have any uh, that that I can put in a cart. But it's been showing it sold out. Um, by the way, those are like fifty dollars a piece. So, you know, some people say, well, why don't you just buy a standard one and then cut it yourself? Um, I'm I'm almost to the point to where I want to try that. Um, and there are, you know, I've seen several types of instructions on how to do that. Um, so <clears throat> the standard one is longer. So what you do is you, you cut it off to standard length or close to standard length. Um, and then you have to bend. If you look here, look closely, you'll see these, I don't know what they're, veins or, or, uh, these long crevices here. You would have to stick something in there, like maybe a needle nose pliers or something, smooth that out, and then actually actually expand it because it has to fit over this uh, this thing here. Um, so the problem is that sometimes these crack when you do that. So uh, I'm very close to doing that. Um, but I don't want it looking like shit either. But I guess it it might not matter if you can kind of paint it. Um, if you have a Dremel, maybe you can touch it up a bit. You know, 
grind out all the imperfections, but I don't know. I, I'll, I'll pay $50 once. I might even buy two in case I buy another one of these because this is actually a nice buy. Um, I'm going to replace this grip. This is a standard grip, and it's the same as this one. All they did was they rotated it back so it, it fits like this. So originally it fit like, let me see if I can hold this up. <laughs> like that. Like that. So you could see it angled away from the gun. Um, that was, that is supposed to help, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, helping dealing with a uh, recoil and muzzle rise. Um, so what else did I buy with this? I bought a mag loader. I bought a side adjustment tool. Ouch. Damn, I got shots today. So my arms are hurting. Um, I bought a, uh, a, what do you call it? A bore cleaner, sort of like a bore snake. Um, and what I want to do next is I want to see if this thing, I have to do research because I'm, I'm, I think that this thing will take um, a cleaning rod. So it has the fitting here and there's a hole down there, um, but it didn't come with one. So so I'm, I'm wondering if it'll fit. Um, I haven't seen, I've been doing uh, forum research looking to see what I can fit on this gun and taking a look at other other people's experiences. Um, I haven't seen anything regarding that for this gun. I've seen them for the AMD 65s, but not for this. The AMD 65 has a different barrel. It has a longer barrel. Um, the AMD 65 does not have this either because it doesn't need it. It's got the longer barrel. The reason they added this is to meet barrel length compliance. Um, but it, I think it, I think it looks cool. A lot of people think it's overdone, um, and then there's the fact that um, it might bug people in the booth next to you at the ranges. Um, from my understanding, it it spits fire, and uh, that muzzle brake doesn't do anything to keep it quiet. Um, build quality on this is good. I should not have I should not have any problems with this gun. Uh, all these people who are saying uh, clear view investments and uh, what is it classic firearms, uh, they sh they sell shitty AKs. Um, I'm not seeing that. You know this isn't like a a, a Ross or a C39 V2. Um, or, or any of the other uh, AKs that tend to beat themselves up. Um, I have yet to see anyone complaining in the forum saying that their Clearview Investments AK is shit or it's developed issues internally um, or that the biggest complaint is the barrel, that it's, uh, it's not chrome lined. So unless you're shooting uh, six figure rounds a year out of your gun you're probably you're probably not gonna notice that's from my understanding um, so so and if you're really worried I mean the gun is good enough to where when you reach that point you can just send this get by a new barrel send the barrel and this gun off to a gunsmith and have them replace it but the fitment and finish is good on this I've taken this apart several times um, they do say that the gas tube on this, okay, I'm taking this out, uh, is overly ported, so the hole is a lot bigger than it should be, which means that this is going to be overgassed, uh, which means that I have to watch out for, hold on a second here. Damn it. Okay. 
I have to watch out to ensure that this doesn't get beat up hitting the rear trunnion. So the fix for that, or I guess the uh, I guess the mitigation for that is to either buy a recoil buffer and put it here, um, or buy a stiffer spring, which it will negate the overgassed status of the gun. Um, but all of this is forged. Um, I didn't see any problem with the parts. Um, so some people on the forums were complaining because they insist that Clearview Investments and, uh, and what do you call it, uh, and Classic Firearms uh, were trying to pull the wool over people's eyes by selling products that, um, what was the problem? Someone opened up their gun and saw that the bolt looked like it had been modified. And then I guess several other people saw the same thing. And what it boils down to is was, was that they, you know, Clearview, well, not Clearview, but Classic Firearms was accused of uh, taking guns that had headspace problems and grinding down the bolt to make them compliant. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of crazy, and I don't know if that's that's true or not. But um, I didn't see any problem with this particular gun's. Uh, hold on a second here. I didn't see any issues with the bolt. So. Uh, The only issue I see with this gun right now is that I haven't even taken it to the range yet and because of the cycling that I do against this trigger here, um, the what the, uh, the bolt carrier, I guess the little tail on the end, um, is hitting the trigger and because this is a Tapco, it's got this little, uh, it's not, it's not it's rounded. Um, it's got like this little bend in, in it, and that's causing issues. Um, it's causing some mushrooming. Um, and from my understanding, that's not, I mean, that happens with a lot of uh, AKs, even uh, arsenals. arsenals. Um, and the, the real issue is that the <clears throat> since this isn't a, a stock piece, this trigger group, the metal was more than likely harder than the bolt and the internals, and so it's making things mushroom. Uh, the fix is to actually grind out that little edge on the face of the uh, of the hammer. Um, in fact, I can fill it with my finger, and it's it's very pronounced. So what I can do is I can take the uh, the trigger out. I'm not really willing, ready to do that. Um, and smooth that out. Um, most pe that's what most people do, or they swap out the trigger. But other than that, that's it. Okay, so let me. Hardest part is putting this. Uh, putting this cover give me just a second or I can do this off camera there you go so the cycles good again it came with four tapco mags there's hardly any play you know, a lot of people like to base how well their AKs are based on the fact on how multiple magazines uh, stay in place this is well enough for me um, so there's no other guns out there that comes with four Tapco mags or four mags in general um, do I need more mags 
Um, four is a good start. That's more than what I have for my uh, AR556. Um, so, um, you know, some people, sh you know, think Tapco is shit. I'm fine with Tapco. Um, I don't think I'm going to have any problem with these. Plus, this is a compliance part. So, um, one other thing is if you decide to get this gun and you still have this on here just be aware that <clears throat> putting 30 round magazines into your weapon um, this is going to be kind of in the way so you're going to have to I mean you, it's doable you can get used to it uh, but you don't have quite as much room so when I put this in I mean you can pretty much just you don't need a lot of angle to put it in if I do it like this and the foregrip was here it still wouldn't touch so I don't actually need that much room so all you have to do is just tilt it just enough to insert it and then pull it back and that's it or you can get one of those uh, foregrips that, that flip up and down or whichever way right um, so it's got the uh, stamps under here clear view investments so if it was uh, center fire or classic firearms you would still you would see that under there um, it is labeled as a SA 2000 there I have not checked to see if all the serial numbers match I don't really care um, that's not important to me so it does have a sling and it, it came with the sling and it came with the f one two three four four magazine uh, magazine pouch so within that pouch were the four um, magazines and it came with the extra so there's actually it actually came with five I'm trying to think of what else and will I use the uh, sling I could put it on here but uh, it's not important uh, all the riveting is good uh, there was no rust on the gun um, this appears to be rust in these little holes here. I'm not sure if you can see them on the camera. So if you look closely, if you got good eyes, you can see a little bit of brown in there. I'm not sure of what that is. I'm not sure if it's rust. It might be rust because I think this is parkerized. But even on this side, there's one that's that's rusty. But uh, overall, I don't see. I didn't see any rust in the inside. I didn't see any rust in here, under the guard um, none of this wiggles the only thing that's wiggling is the the sling uh, little doohickey there um, trigger is great the trigger is awesome and of course it has a little uh, safety scar um, the safety doesn't give me any problems either I mean it's very engaging um, I can't think of anything else that is it um, I'm gonna end up firing this before I fire my AR556 though I've had that one that AR4 going on three years I haven't fired it yet. It's a great looking gun, but I've always been kind of drawn to AK-47s. I don't know why I didn't get one of these before I got the AR-556. Um, I might not have even bought it if I had bought this. So what I could do is I could sell the the AR to, get an, to fund another AK, but uh, I'm happy for now. I mean, I got the best of both worlds. I can pick either which one I want. Um, is either one of these good for home defense some people say yeah this might be overkill and in, in fact some people even think that the AR is overkill all you have to do is find a, study a plan know where to shoot and where not to shoot um, and know that when you're inside the house there's nothing in between the drywalls and in some spots uh, you might have one one sheet of drywall so uh, 
you're not going to have a lot to stop that bullet. So just remember when you pull that trigger, you can't recall that that back. There's no do-overs. There's no mulligans. Um, know what's beyond that drywall. Um, and even, you know, we live on a corner. So <clears throat> we've got homes here. We've got homes here. We've got homes there. There's homes that way, but it's probably 300 meters. Uh, so if I'm going to shoot somewhere, it'd be over there because the house is has brick. So, I mean, the bullet might still go through the brick. Um, so there's less of a chance. But, I mean, really, no matter where I shoot, there's people. There's homes. So I have to be careful. So it might be better to use a handgun with uh, self-defense loads All right so anyways I just wanted to kind of cover this because I haven't covered it and I've had the gun for maybe a month and a half I'm gonna take it to the range before I do any more changes besides the gas tube um, but eventually I want to change the stock and I want to change the grip um, so so when I get done, at least for now, this will be changed, this will be changed, I've already changed this, and this will be changed. Um, I also might want to think about, well, once I get this, I can buy, once I get a, I guess, a, a modified gas tube, I can actually get a, a rail put on so I can use my, uh, my optics. But uh, I'm good for now, I want to learn how to how to shoot this with the sights, um, with the iron sights. Um, and I have to take it to the range to actually sight it in. But as it is now, it should be fine. I can't think of anything else to talk about. Um, so, just in case you guys didn't see it, right here says FEG that's the proof mark for the Hungarian uh, gun maker <laughs> I'm trying to get it to show and it's having focus issues but anyways that is all and this video is almost a half an hour long I did not intend for it to be that long um, one other thing uh, so I actually got um, uh, an RMA number from SIG and I sent in my P320 for the voluntary recall. Um, so in my last video, I actually showed some range footage where I was shooting the Glock uh, with the new uh, big dot sights installed. And I took the, uh, the P320 I took the guts out and put it into a subcompact uh, frame. So I, I initially had a small frame, um, and determined that maybe that was too small because I was having issues shooting with it because it's too thin. Uh, so I bought a medium, and it took me eight months to get that. I uh, had an email, you know, email me when when you're back in stock type option clicked in one of these stores and uh, when they stocked it they let me know but it it took eight months for me to get that and I did it for like five or six different stores that was the first one I got it back from uh, and I immediately went and bought it and uh, it is perfect um, it felt it felt good you know I, I, I put the uh, the guts inside of that that uh, module and it just kind of did a test handling of it and it felt really good uh, but then in my last video I took it to the range to shoot it so I shot the Glock first and then toward the end of the range session I decided to uh, try the uh, subcompact and uh, it it is nice um, I, sh I shoot it better than the uh, than my current carry gun the Glock 19 with the big dots um, now that one has contrast uh, contrast sights uh, but the dots are big 
um, and it was very easy for me to get on target really quick and I was doing double taps and hitting you know chest head chest head chest head um, and I mean super fast well for me and uh, it was dead accurate dead accurate so uh, what I think I'm gonna do is I had planned on carrying the Glock 19 um, for a year like I normally do I, I at least try and carry my guns for a year um, that helps me to get used to the gun um, then my you know my muscle memory and, and uh, trigger memory doesn't get all screwy you know screwed up because I'm rotating through three or four or maybe even five different you know carry guns you know I don't I don't like the carry ro rotation concept so uh, uh, you know with that being said um, I think that I might love carrying the the P320 in a subcompact configuration. Um, so when that comes back, they've had it now for maybe three weeks. So I should be getting something back from them within the next three weeks, saying that okay, the gun is done. We're shipping it back to you. Um, once I get it back, I'll take it to the range, do some, uh, you know, shoot maybe a box of ammo through it, um, and contemplate whether or not I wanna, I wanna carry it. So, uh, uh, there it is. Um, some more guns of note. So, this might be my last gun for the rest of the year, because my wife was kind of pissed when I got this one. Um, so it'll be a while. Uh, in the meantime, I could start taking kind of money here and there and chucking it toward my next gun fund, right? So my next gun is more than likely going to be a Beretta APX Compact. Um, I am very impressed with that gun. I'm even considering trying to uh, maybe sell one of my other handguns, maybe one of my TP9 SAs, uh, to fund that gun. Um, another gun that I'm kind of interested in but kind of leery of at the same time because it has kind of some mixed reviews is the Diamondback, uh, was it DB9 AM2? That's a subcompact. Uh, it looks great. Um, depending on who you ask, some people swear by them. Other people say that they're nothing but shit, worse than Keltec. Um, I don't know. So uh, I'm going to be kind of watching, and, and that's a relatively new gun as well. So I'm going to be watching to see, I guess, other reviews to see uh you know before i buy i don't want to buy a piece of shit um but uh those guns are cheap they're in the 300 dollars range um they're striker fired um the the pull uh the trigger pull is rather long um but i'm not sure if it'll it'll change as you shoot it or if, if that's it or I, I don't know um but I'll be watching out for that gun, and I don't know, um, so beginning of next year, maybe I'll have that Beretta APX compact, excuse me, um, but otherwise, we're, we're done with the video, have a good day.